The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. I am Rob McConnell. Here it is a Friday night, Friday. Let me see, it's the 14th of September. Geez, at the end of the month, it's Halloween. And then Remembrance Day in November and followed in December by Christmas. My Lord, where did the, where did the year go, Craig? <sighs> That's what it is when you do four shows a night, five nights a week. It all adds up very fast and the time goes by so fast. But it's always great having you here, members of the XO Nation around the world, because this is truly a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we come to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern right here on the Talkstar Radio Network the Exxon Broadcast Network, the Mutual Broadcast Network, and around the world, streaming TV on Simul TV Channel 54, which is the Exxon TV channel. Now, if you'd like to subscribe to Simul TV and get not only the Exxon TV channel, but other great channels, including the Sony Movie Channel, just go to visit www.xz. I'm sorry, that's my website. No, we're not selling it. www.simultv.com. Our first guest tonight is from Calgary, Alberta, here in Canada. He is a songwriter, musician, storyteller. And joining me now from Calgary is Mark Sebastian. Mark, welcome to the Exxon. Thank you very much, Rob. Thank you for having me. Uh, great uh, great having you with us. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, as far as uh, my history with uh, uh, music uh, and how that came about, uh, really all my life i uh, I've been an uh, athlete uh, and someone who enjoyed sports to, to a high degree, high degree. And uh, eventually when my playing days were over, um, I realized there was a bit of a gap. Uh, something was missing, you know, and uh, I'd always had a love for music. I remember as a child uh, or a young, uh, a young boy growing up delivering papers on those cold days in Saskatchewan. I, I was I'm from Saskatchewan originally. Um, I would listen to my transistor radio and all the great music that was always playing, whether it was Motown or whatever. Uh, yeah. I was just a huge fan and I would just, that seemed to get me through, you know, it really, it kept my, uh, my walk light and it gave me the extra energy. And uh, I just, uh, I like to move to the music and I discovered later on in life after my playing days were over that I wanted to do something with regards to music, but uh you know, I'd never picked up a guitar and never written a song, so I didn't really um, didn't know where to start. But, um, you know, there was a day, I, I'm not sure why this day was any different from any other day, but um, I had some time on my hands and I was listening to um, a song on the radio, one of my favorites, so Werewolves of London. And Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great one. I love it. It's one of my sure favorites. Is. So I listened to it and I thought, Oh, that's such an interesting song it, because it's about monster, a monster mm -hmm. really, and, and nothing else out there these days. Anyway, I, I just don't, you don't hear any songs about monsters. Uh, and uh, right then and there it started. I said to myself, why don't you have some fun and write a song about a monster? And then I decided, well, what, which, what, who's, who's going to be? So, I did. I thought about it a little while. I thought I can't remember a, a great song about vampires that comes to mind. I thought, you know what? That's what I'll do. And um, my daughter was uh, living in LA at the time, dancing and doing some modeling there. And uh, I went to visit her a few times, and I really started to enjoy the LA landscape. And of course, in LA with movies and, and you know TV, the Twilight Zone. There's always something about vampires, and of course. Bella Lugosi was a famous vampire from back in the 40s or 30s. Oh, my right? gosh. Yeah. Great. Great. <laughs> so so here I am. I go, okay, how, how, how do you write a song? And so I was like, okay, well, why don't you just look up Werewolves of London? And so I did. So I listened to it, and then I read the lyrics, and then I looked at the structure of the song, how the 
you know, the chorus, the verses. And okay, mm -hmm. I, th I thought because this is my first song, I'm just going to copy the structure. So I copied the verse structure and started out with my first line, which was, um, I could have swore I saw Bela Lugosi. And I'm not sure why I, that just, and then once I had that line, I was off to the races. And so um, the verse or the chorus ended up being much, much different from the werewolf chorus and the song turned out great. And uh, it's just released with Aliens and Bob, but that's the start for me of songwriting. I thought, you know, I really enjoyed that. That was fun. Mm -hmm. I, I felt good about it. <laughs> and then I couldn't stop after that. Ideas wow. would come to me everywhere from, um, and uh, so off I went, but I still wasn't playing a guitar. I still wasn't playing a keyboard. So basically it was in my head. I could actually sing the song in my head. When I wrote it, I could actually sing it. And I thought, well, if I can sing it, then I think I'm halfway there. So I kept writing these songs. And um, what happened was I would watch documentaries. Uh, I mean, I watch doc I love documentaries about uh, Egyptians. Oh, me too. Yeah. yeah, who doesn't? I mean, I just couldn't get enough of them. So I'm watching them, watching them. I thought, that's it. I'm going to write a song about Egyptians. <laughs> so, so the next day, I did some research, mm. and, then I, and then I started writing a song about it. It's called Rock and the Egyptian, and it's one of my favorite little tunes. Uh, it was recorded already once, but uh, we haven't released it. Uh, we're going to be making some changes to it, but it's a fun little song. So so all these, all the, all that's where I got my ideas from. All the medium kind of what I saw out there, and especially the documentaries I watched. And uh, there was the next one was Hopscotch. I watched a documentary about children in Bangladesh who had a tough time growing up. They didn't have any oh schooling. Gosh, yeah. yeah, and so I wrote a song called Hopscotch about kind of um, these kids, you know, trying to be allowed to go to school, allowed to be mm -hmm. children as opposed to to working when they're you know eight years old. So. Um, and then Aliens and Bob, well, that's that's the next story. And, of course, that was um, uh, Bob Lazar. Ah. There, there was a special on Netflix, and uh, I don't remember what it's called. It could be just mm -hmm. called Area 51 and Bob Lazar. I don't know what it's called. but So I, I forget how many years ago it came out. Um, but uh, I love it anything about aliens and UFOs. I'm very interested in it and I I find it fascinating. So I watched it. I know I was done watching it. I said, yeah, yeah, you need to write a song about aliens. So so where do you start? But and I thought I thought I was going to write a song about Bob Lazar. I really did. Um, because that was the, that was a documentary. But what I decided to do was like many of my songs, I decided to do research. So what happened was I would research the subject, UFOs, mm -hmm. aliens, and I would come up with four or five pages of information. I would jot things down. Um, you can see some of these pages here. Yeah. So these are all, this is all aliens involved. So if you look at it, it you know, I, there was research, and, and uh, there's information about the War of the Worlds. Uh, there's information on uh, Art Bell and uh, the caller from 97. Do you remember the Art Bell caller from 97? No, on I don't. The, okay, so that was uh, the caller called in, and it was uh, someone uh, saying that they were an ex-employee of Area 51 and that they were being... They 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 left the job because of mental illness, and the caller was just going crazy on the phone. Mm -hmm. And if you ever get a chance to listen to this, it, it really uh, sends uh, chills up your spine if you do. And so I started to research. I had all this research, and eventually I whittled it down. And there was these stories about the Tic Tac UFOs. You're familiar with the Tic Tac? Oh, UFOs? sure, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So the, the uh, the fighter pilots uh, and USS Nimitz. Um, so eventually the story, when I whittled it down to the verses, I had maybe seven or eight, then it went down to four, and then finally three. We got, we've got some information there about uh, the fighter pilots, USS Nimitz. We've got information there about um, 
the constellation Andromeda. And right. then probably your favorite verse is on the coast, the paranormal radio show boasts it's good to know we're not alone. Then, mm -hmm. a, call, then a caller from Area 51 stuns with memories of his alien son. So that's that's the verse that got us, you know, kind of over the top. But luckily I had uh, the tic-tac-toe mm -hmm. uh, experience. And so I wanted to write something fun for the chorus, but what to do with tic-tac. And uh, I said, tic-tac, tic-tac, tic-tac. And then I'd say, well, if I call it tic-tac-toe, I think I can rhyme something in there. So it ended up being, so tic-tac, tic-tac-toe, one, two, three, four UFOs. So tick, tack, tick, tack, toe. <laughs> One, two, three, four UFOs. Where did they come from? And where did they go? Adios, amigo. So that's sure. how it, yeah, that, that's how it got constructed in the end. And uh, of course, again, I had no guitar. So this is all in my head still. Okay. And uh, yeah, do you have any questions? <laughs> no, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go for a break right now. And when we come back, we're going to play Alien and Bob in its entirety. And then I should have some questions for you. Charlie Rumbo is our special guest. Great having you with us. Thanks Thank very you. much for contacting us. I sincerely appreciate it. That's fun so will be back on the other side of this break. And if you'd like to, uh, after you hear Alien and Bob, you want to listen to it again and 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 again, just Google it. It's that simple. Just Google Alien and Bob, and it's all over the internet on every streaming service. This is the excellent I'm Rob McConnell. Charlie Rumba and I return on the other side of this break. Don't go away. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Well, it looks like we're having a bit of a technical issue here. Uh, our producer is trying to figure out what the heck happened. Maybe he said the uh, the file was taken back by the aliens, but he's going to keep trying. Okay. Charlie Rumb is our special guest. Hey, Charlie, welcome back. And uh, so tell us, you, you've you got this song in your head, but you, you don't know how to play any instruments. What what happened? Well, Where did you go from here? Yeah, where did I go from here? Well, I um, I moved physically uh, from from one location to the other uh, and in the new place that i moved to mm -hmm. um it was uh fully furnished um and so uh, the individuals who own the the home um for some it just 
uh, it was meant to be. Um, we started talking and they're lovely people. And so I sit down, I said, you know, I love this place. So I'm going to take it. And uh, they were happy to have me. And, and so I'm looking around and here in the corner um, is this acoustic guitar. So this acoustic guitar is sitting in the corner. And so by this time I had written probably 20 or 30 songs. So it was starting, they were starting to pile up. <laughs> so, so, so the guy says, so Mark, listen, you know, if you want, you want to play that guitar, go ahead. And I thought to myself, that's just strange, you know, because it, the timing is probably just perfect. So lo and behold, it was sitting there, but I didn't pick it up for, for probably two months. I think I looked at it. I looked at it. I thought, Mark, you, you know, you really, you, you need to see if these, you can put these songs to music. And then the one day I said, okay, pick it up. And, and and give it a shot. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst thing that can happen? So I picked Brooks, it up. We, he, I think he's got it. Does he? Let's hear it. We're close. We're close. Uh, uh, Craig, uh, can uh, have you got this on the audio speaker? Hi, uh, Craig. No, we're not. Craig, we're not hearing it over here. No, sorry, Craig, it, we didn't hear it. It'll come. It'll come sooner or later here. Yeah, he's working on it. I can tell you that. Yeah. And so with regards to uh, the guitar, slowly but surely, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, then I started picking it up every day, every day. And uh, um, I could play some simple chords and Aliens and Bob was one of the first ones. I just put a couple simple chords to it It started strumming away and then I recorded it and thought, you know, Mark, that sounds pretty good. Even with my singing voice, which is not that good. And even with <laughs> some, some basic, some basic playing, I thought, you yeah, know, it's pretty good. So once I realized it was, it was decent, I thought, well, here we go. Um, the, the rhymes and everything fell into place wonderfully. And, um, Right. Just to backtrack a, a bit, um, before Aliens and Bob, what kind of got me going was um, I had 20 or 30 songs written, and um, my daughter, uh, Lara, who was living in L.A. at the time, um, she, she called me a week before my birthday. She says, Dad, you know those songs you wrote, all those songs? I said, yeah. She was which ones are your favorite? Tell me which ones are your favorite. So I told her which ones my favorites were. And she goes, could you do me a favor? She said, could you, could you send them to me? And could you, could you sing them to me? Sing them to me. She said, I said, Oh, okay, no problem. So I sent her some recordings on the phone, just some basic stuff. And, uh, and I knew she was up to something, you know, she's, she's always, <laughs> she's always up to something and that's great. Uh, so my birthday comes, uh, it was the day of my birthday. She sends me these uh, files. Uh, it was, I think, three, three. She had found three musicians, three bands in L.A. to record three of my songs for my birthday. Isn't that wonderful? And so I'm listening to them. Um, one was Vampires of L.A. It was rec recorded originally by someone in L.A. I've since redone it, but... Um, the other one was Rockin' the Egyptian. Um, Space Cadet was another one. So I'm listening to these songs, and I swear to God, I, I almost cried because I thought, number one, you know, that was such a sweet thing to do. But but number two was like, they sound good. Because really, I mean, how would I know? I mean, I, I thought they made nice poems, but, you know, are, are they going to, is someone going to sing them and say, oh, yeah, okay, this this sounds good? So that was kind of just a backtrack. That's uh, that's uh, how how that started and how the, the confidence started to build. But uh, you know, once I got the acoustic guitar going, then uh, I was starting to roll, and that's great. So um, Aliens and Bob was born, and um, you know, uh, speaking about songs about UFOs and, and and aliens and space, you know. 
Rob, what's your favorite song about aliens or space or UFOs? Do you know? Tell me. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a song besides, called besides, God, besides aliens and Bob. Yeah, well, well, of course, of course. It's a song called "God Bless the UFO," and I don't know if you've ever heard it. I've never heard it. Now, okay, is it, it's a true song. I think you'll. Well, I just got back from Roswell, where the aliens have been. And if you ask the feds the cause, well, they'll only lie again. Now I'm hunted by the gumshoes, and I'm wanted by the cops, because they think that I might be the guy making circles in the crops. And I know that there's a conspiracy from the voices in my head. Elvis lives, that's clear to me It's McCartney who is dead And if the Mars man should come again And take me, I will go I will take a trip on their rocket ship God bless the UFO Give JFK this message It's the Cuban army's fault and I know that Dave Koresh is alive inside a vault. We've seen reports in papers of a guy who knows about a car that runs on chewing gum, but the Arabs rubbed him out. And we loudly warn that America is badly unprepared. But the Cold War through, we need something new that can get you good and scared. You wonder just who is warning you of conspiracies today we're the ones who fill the rumor mill we are the cia well that was something that that is my favorite song my second favorite song and and we're still trying to get yours up here we don't we can't understand what happened to it because it was in the queue right next to that one um so yeah the so CIA, what the CIA um yeah of course in in that uh, particular uh, at the end there and, and and that was when i watched the bob Lazar documentary the whole idea with him kind of being in his words, kind of harassed by the CIA or they broke into his home looking for element 115. That mm -hmm. really intrigued me. And I thought, well, that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to write the song about. I'm going to write the song about the injustice and not believing him and all that. But, you know, in the end, uh, I had all this other content that was so rich and Bob did get it. Bob did get into the song, but really he got into it at the very end where I talk about belief do you believe in angels? Do you believe in God? Mm -hmm. Do you believe in aliens? Do you believe in Bob? Um, and seeing is believing. Where have the faithful gone? So tell us what you know now. Please tell us what you saw. So tell us what you know now. Please tell us, Bob Lazar. So that's where Bob gets into the song. So he gets in, but the title, but the singer of this song said oh the ufo song it's a ufo song i thought maybe we should call it the ufo song but i had this thing where i had for me it had to be aliens and bob i don't know why yeah what do you think do you want it to, should it be the ufo song actually there is a song called the ufo song oh there is yeah are you, are you gonna play it for me <laughs> uh no we don't have it <laughs> okay we don't have it here in this uh, uh queued up here but no there it, it there is the ufo song and uh the, you know there are so many different ways of looking at ufos have you ever seen a ufo uh no not up close and personal other than what i've seen uh, through um everyone else's eyes uh, you know yeah. in, the in the medium uh, tv uh, you know etc uh, but um i would yeah that's kind of it's on my bucket list, actually. I mean, but where do I go where there's a lot of UFOs? You know, where can I stand? Where can I camp where I can just, that would be so exciting. It's like searching for Bigfoot, you know? It's like, it, it sounds so exciting. Even if you didn't see one, I think it would still be so exciting. You and I have to take a break. Please stand by. We're going to see if we can find out whatever happened to aliens and Bob. 
Charlie Rumb is our special guest, and we'll be back on the other side as we continue here in the X Zone from our broadcast center in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. And we're back. Our guest of this hour is Charlie Rumba. And where's Charlie gone? Hello, Charlie. Oh, there hey. you are. Uh, still can't find it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just take a little bit of a pause here. And I'm going to zip down to the office and get it. And we're going to load it. But we're going to play you something very interesting right now. It's a bit of a show that we did a couple of years ago with Denise Stoner, who is an alien abductee. So, Craig. Wow. Cool. So hopefully, Craig, are you able to uh, cue that up for me, please? He's doing that right now. And when it's, where is it, Craig? I can't see it, buddy. Da, 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 da. Oh, there it is. All right, here we go. The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is Denise Stoner, and she was invited and accepted to become a part of the Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial Encounters, free, as a member of the research team. She is proud to be part of MUFON National Experience Research Team. Uh, she's a member working under, under Director of Abduction Research, Another young lady that we've had on the show before, Kathleen Marden. 
She's also a Florida MUFON field investigator, star team member, Florida MUFON state section director, and former chief investigator. She co-authored and published her first book. And we're going to we're going to get back to our good friend here, Charlie, because guess guess what I found, Charlie? Hey, you know what? I think it's aliens and Bob. And is it aliens and Bob? That is the question. <laughs> friend pretty darn good well i hope you like that song because you had me on your show so i hope you like this song of course <laughs> yes of course of course well that's um uh, yeah I'm, it's so exciting I'm, it's 
Yeah, you I mean I, I've heard the song many times because when you work on a song, when you record mm -hmm. it, when you make a video for it, eventually you end up having to listen to it. How many times? Uh, I'm not going to say a thousand, but a lot of <laughs> a lot of times. So um, eventually, you want to just let it go and okay, bye bye, see ya, and um, eventually uh, you welcome it back. And um, I still get a little bit chills, a little bit of chills when I, when I when I listen to it. And if I haven't listened to it for a while. Now, this song couldn't have happened without um, some people. Uh, Amelia Bushell um, from Vancouver, an amazing singer. I picked her out of a group of 50 female vocalists uh, on a website called soundbetter.com. Um, so most of this song was done remote. Um, so... I heard her voice and I thought, oh my God, this voice is mm -hmm. perfect for what I want. And as soon as I contacted her, she was so excited. She was, oh yeah, no, I'm a big alien girl. And, not... <laughs> and she's like, I'm so excited to do it. She said, oh, I love the lyrics. I love the lyrics. And she kept calling it the UFO song. Yeah. And Amelia Bushell. You can find her on, uh, on YouTube. She's an amazing singer. She has her own band from Vancouver. I think she moved to Montreal, but we keep in contact, and uh, she'll be doing some more songs for me down the road. Um, Gary Arturio um, was the uh, producer of the song, and he was recommended by Amelia. Now, Gary's from Brooklyn. So Gary's uh, worked on a few songs for me now and did a really excellent job with Aliens and Bob. Um his idea to put the um, the keyboards in at, at the certain point there, it was perfect, but he, he just had a good feel for what we were doing. And uh, I thank him so much. Um, last but not least, um, Kush, Kush is his name. Um, uh, I met him here in Calgary. Um, actually, I met his uh, girlfriend at a farmer's market. And we started talking about music and she said, my boyfriend plays guitar. I wow. said, oh, okay, yeah, maybe we should get together. So what happened is we did get together, and I said, Kush, you know, I have the song, Aliens and Bob. Do you want to help me with it? He goes, yes. He's from uh, the Jarling originally, uh, India. Uh, hmm. they're, they're Nepalese people, wonderful people, oh, just the sweetest people in the world, and he can play a mean guitar. So I went to his apartment every Saturday for a month. We sat down. I sang as good as I could. I told him this is how it should go. And we, and he's, he's responsible for most of the electric guitar. So Kush, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, it, um, I'm the songwriter and I got the idea for the, you know, the, the melody and the structure, but um, it takes, uh, takes a village. <laughs> It takes, it takes a village to record a song. Um, so I want to thank all those people. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, do it again. I've got one called um, Rocket Kid. Which, all right, uh, we've got to take a break. Please stand by, Exxon Nation. I'm Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Our guest this hour is Charlie Roomba. And he is the songwriter. He's a musician. He's a storyteller. He's from Calgary, Alberta, and we uh, we played, finally, Aliens and Bob. And we're going to talk more to uh, Charlie about what his plans are for the future and a lot more. Still to come on tonight's show, we have, let me see, we have a Swami in the next hour. And in our final hour tonight, we have Lloyd Auerbach. And anybody who knows anything about the paranormal knows Lloyd because he is one of the originals when it comes to uh, paranormal investigations and teaching paranormal investigations as well as parapsychology. That's still to come tonight here on the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada.
All right, ExoNation, here's a question for you. Are you a believer or are you a skeptic? Either side, send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. And for all you lovers of radio, if you'd like to listen to the Exxon 724-365, the Exxon Broadcast Network, that is, visit www.xzbn.net, or you can go to any of the major streaming services online, and we are there. You can listen to, let me see, Dr. Bernie Beitman, Dr. Gibbs Wils, uh, Williams, Kevin Randall, Gwilda Wiaka, yours truly. Uh, Roberta Grimes is there. Sharon Lynn Wyeth is there. And, and so many other great show hosts that we've had over the years. And we have all the archives there. And you know what? It's free with our compliments because we want to get the words out there. We want people who've had these experiences, whether it's a ghost experience, whether it's a Bigfoot experience, whether it's a UFO experience, alien abduction, an experience in the Bermuda Triangle, wherever, we want them to know they are not alone. So all you need to do to, to, to feel as if you can Come out of the closet, so to speak, as Gwilda said last night. www.xzbn.net. Exxon shows there going back, I think, back to some of them go back to nine uh, to 2014. Thousands of shows there, free to listen to with our compliments. If you want to watch the Exxon TV channel, 724 365 we have shows on egyptology we have shows on templars we have shows on conspiracies cover-ups what would happen if uh there was a meteor heading towards earth the entire story of nasa conspiracy theories you know uh, the lunar hoax for example and much more 724 365 at www.simultv.com and the Exxon TV channel is channel 54. And um, if you like what we talk about and what you view here and you want to read the X Chronicles newspaper, it's been published since 1993 every month, just go to www.xchroniclesnewspaper.net. It's that simple and it's free, again, with our compliments. Charlie Rumba is my special guest all the way from Calgary, Alberta. Great song, buddy. Yeah, thank you. It really uh, fell into place, and uh, yeah, I couldn't be happier with it. It it, uh, it makes me happy. And uh, speaking of uh, what's happening in the future, um, I think before we left uh, the air, there uh, I was mentioning Rocket Kid. I, I've got a song yeah. I, I wrote called Rocket Kid, and uh, I'd like to um, I'd like to get that out there one day and. I think it's this particular song is is about um, um, an earthling. Uh, it's a it's a little girl who um, grows up in a strange way um, on Earth, and just as maybe uh, gender identity difficulty, it's she doesn't have that mm -hmm. difficulty. She keeps looking up at the stars and thinks that she's from somewhere else. And um, so that's the basis of the song. And she dreams to get in a rocket and kind of go home. And so I'm hoping to get that um, put out here in the next year. And I'm going to read you um, the first verse, or first verse, first couple of verses. And I want you to tell me if I should record this or not. Their scorpion was born under a blood orange sky as Mercury and Mars they comforted the night. Her mother was dazed, confused by the fight, with baby in arms by the morning light. They were stuck on a planet run by ones and zeros, where all the children dressed like superheroes, where information is the new religion, and only cowboys battle aliens. She was a tall boy, rough and tough as nails. She was bright-eyed, some kind of bushy-tailed. Loved to shake her Dr. Pepper, make it fizz, she was a star baby. She was a rocket kid. What do you think? Should I record that, Rob? I am. Uh, I, I love it. 
<laughs> I, you know, the mind just goes. I, I can actually see the ones and zeros, you know, flashing in the back and, you know, her looking up at the sky, you know. Yeah, I, th I think it would be great. Mind yeah. you, I don't know what the tune is like. <laughs> yeah. It's a great poem. I think the chorus, you know, she was a star, baby. She was a rocket kid. She was a star, baby. She was, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> got to get the guitar going and there you uh, go. we'll, we'll come up with it uh we'll come up with it so what's my favorite uh what's your favorite song besides the one you mentioned to me some of the ones that come out to me is space audits odyssey by david bowie right yeah that's a, that's a great one uh commander tom uh let yeah, me see yeah yeah uh yeah. major major tom right? major tom right right so it's, and let me see there's um calling occupants of interplanetary ah. space you know what? Very few people, when I ask them, you know, what their favorite song about UFOs, very few people bring up that song. And that's maybe because it came out in the 70s with uh, Karen Carpenter and the Carpenters, right? Actually, they didn't do it first. It was a group called Klaatu. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Yep. Uh, see, I should have known that. But you know what? To me, it's always been a car. <laughs> 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 like, what year was that that, that that came out? Oh, God. It had to be in the 60s. Wow. Before my time, just slightly. Sixties hmm. so, or seventy, Craig. Seventies. Craig says seventies. Yeah. So anyway, uh, calling occupants. I love it. One of my favorites. Uh, the Carpenters. But I'm going to have to listen to the other one for sure. Uh, Space Odyssey by uh, David Bowie. Probably David Bowie. Favorite. Yeah, that's a great. Probably, one. Yeah, probably my favorite one. Right. Um, but uh, Rocket Man is is certainly up there, right? Oh, definitely. Elton John. But. You know, it's funny. I talked to my, my buddy the other day about uh, going on your show and I talked to him about maybe things that we're going to talk about. And I said, you know, some some of these, I want to talk about some of these space songs. He, I said, yeah. Rocket, I said, Rocket Man. He goes, Rocket Man. He goes, he goes, that's not about space. He said, I go, what are you talking about? He goes, it's about, it's about Elton John. Bernie Topin wrote it about Elton, about Elton's life. Elton was living a, a, a life that he, where he didn't feel he belonged, and he was mm -hmm. like a rocket man in, in a different world because because of the life he was leading, you know. And so I thought to myself, "Wow, man!" <laughs> but you know what, what the heck? You, you can put a song to anything that you want if it, if you can relate to it. You relate you know to what? it, yeah, exactly, and. I appreciate what he said and actually I, I kind of think of it that maybe he was right but to me it's kind of still a song about a you know guy who likes to fly his rocket but um, yeah. metaphorically you know my songs are all written in a literal sense I just don't have the metaphoric gift that a lot of people have so mine are kind of what what you hear what you see is kind of what you get but uh, I'm I'm working on trying to be more metaphoric because I think what's if there's more left up to the imagination of the listener, I think then they can go to more places. Hey, Charlie, I hate to do this, but we've run out of time for tonight. I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm glad we got your song finally aired and uh, we'll be airing it as uh, it will put it in rotation on the Exxon Broadcast Network, the radio side. Thank you for having me. I, I really take, had a great time. You take care of yourself. And uh, don't be a stranger. Come back and visit us again. Absolutely. Thank you. And keep keep warm in Alberta. I will. You too. Take care. All right, Charlie. Take care of yourself. And Exo Nation, if you'd like to uh, listen to Aliens and Bob, all you need to do is just Google it. And there are plenty of places online where you can listen to it. And uh, it's a great song. Just let your imagination roll with it. You know, theater of the mind. No, it really does work. That's it for this hour. I'll be back at the top of the hour as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in good old St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Okay.